May marks Women's Health Care Month, and for many of us, understanding and balancing our hormones is literally half the battle. Here to help us take back control of our health is Dr. Mindy Pels. Dr. Mindy, thanks so much for joining oh, us here. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm of excited course. to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk about all things women's health because it really, truly is important. Yeah. First way to get started is balancing your hormones. Yeah, which is a big task a big unto task. itself, right? <laughs> I mean, when you say balance hormones, most women don't even know what that is. Mm -hmm. And when we look at what's going on in women's health right now, so many women have hormonal problems. In fact, they say like 43% of women and say wow. they have challenges with their hormones and that's the ones reporting it mm -hmm. so that we have this big illiteracy when it comes to hormones and how to take care of them and how to balance them mm -hmm. which is why food's a great place to start well let's start over here because these are some beautiful and colorful foods that I have a feeling it might help our hormones a little bit yeah so one of the key principles that I still can't figure out why as women we weren't taught this is that certain foods help us build estrogen mm -hmm. which comes in, in the first half of our cycle and is what goes away Way really quickly when we are going through menopause and certain foods will f build progesterone mm -hmm. and these foods are completely different and so we actually need to be eating different at different times of our cycle and we need to be eating different when we go through menopause. Wow, that's so interesting. So let's first start over here. Can you kind of break down what these foods do to help benefit your hormones? Yeah, so estrogen, it likes us to eat foods that are a little lower on the glycemic index. Mm -hmm. So glycemic index is how much a food is gonna raise your blood sugar. So estrogen wants us to keep our blood sugar low. Estrogen wants you to keep insulin down. So when we look at something like PCOS, which is a really common hormonal problem for younger women, a lot of that is an insulin imbalance. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we don't have insulin go up. We want insulin to stay low, which is why like berries, berries are the lowest of all fruit. Mm -hmm. So as far as the rise in your blood sugar, uh, nuts and seeds and protein also avocados, like my favorite mm -hmm. uh, is also going to minimize how much your blood sugar rises, which is going to allow estrogen, the positive estrogen to build in your system. And this is something you want to do in the first half, right? Yeah. Before your cycle, you're yeah. saying. Which is also really interesting because day one through day 10 uh -huh. of your menstrual cycle, day one being the day you actually start your period, those first 10 days, your body's making estrogen. And these are the foods you're going to want to eat wow. so that your body can do that. It's like supporting your body in this miraculous thing that it does every month. Now, what about these foods over here? Because this helps with estrogen, but what about over here? Yeah, so this is actually my favorite because... <laughs> um, Ask any woman be week before our period, what do we crave? Chocolate. Yep. Come on, we, it's always yes. chocolate. Okay, so check <laughs> this out. So there's a reason we crave chocolate. Uh -huh. It's high in magnesium, and you need magnesium to make progesterone so that the uterine lining will actually shed and you'll start your cycle. Wow. So you also crave carbs mm -hmm. because, and, and lots of high sugared carbs because you need glucose to come back up, completely opposite of what estrogen needs. You need to bring glucose up so that you... It's, it's high so that your body can make progesterone so that uterine lining can shed. Wow, which that's is incredible. Why we crave carbs and chocolate the week before our period. Finally, it, there's a reason. We have the answer. Yes. Finally, I always wanted to know why are we always craving chocolate? Right? So that's good for progesterone, right? Yeah. Like you said. But what about over here? These foods? Yeah, so the same thing. These, you know, a lot of people are like, well, where do things like pasta fit in? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're trying to build estrogen and really like this is really important for fertility and reducing symptoms of things like PCOS or just a normal menstrual cycle, we typically stay away from things like breads and pastas. They are going to be the, the food that's really going to raise your blood sugar the most. But the week before your period, they're a beautiful food to eat. Or if you're a menopausal woman, you know, we need to also need more progesterone. So cycling in between these two can be really important as well. Can be really important. And you know what else is important oftentimes is fasting. Yes. You do have a new book yes. called Fast Like a Girl. Yeah. Tell me what we can find in the pages. Yeah, and I heard you say earlier you fasted this morning. I did. Yes. I usually fast almost every day. Yeah, <laughs> well done, well done. So wh where this book came about is fasting, intermittent fasting got the became wildly popular mm -hmm. and nobody was teaching 
teaching women how to do it. And so I kept waiting and waiting for somebody to come step forward and yeah. nobody did. And so I, I stepped forward and showed what was working for my patients, what was working in my online community. So it's six different level fasts and you uh -huh. time them according to your hormones and paired with different foods and great for fertility, great for anybody who wants to balance hormones and really good for my perimenopausal and postmenopausal women out there. Now I have one more question for you, Dr. Mindy, before yeah. I let you go. What is maybe one tip you would like to leave for women out there? Month of May, it is Women's Health Care Month. Yeah. Well, the first tip is make sure you believe in yourself because there's so much guilt, so much shame that goes on in a woman's brain when it comes to her health. We were born in a miraculous body and our hormones are our superpower. The second thing is now let's build a lifestyle that maximizes that superpower. But just just don't don't give up on yourself. Yeah. There's so that. much for us to learn about how lifestyle impacts our hormones. Well, this is just so helpful and incredibly informative. Thank you, Dr. Mindy. We oh, really appreciate you. it. Oh, thank you. Thank you.